They hear him. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. Hey, what's up with it, fam? It's Hot Boxing Minute. Your favorite pharmaceutical engineer turned boxing analyst back at you with the realness, of course, as only I can bring it. I've got a couple of subjects I wanted to talk to y'all about today. Let's start off with the Gary Russell Jr. versus Mark McSayo fight card that I just watched. Congratulations, hats off to Mark McSayo. The Freddie Roach understudy, undefeated featherweight is now the WBC featherweight world champion in what was a very, very unusual fight. I've never actually seen a fight like what happened with Gary Russell Jr. and Mark McSayo. Gary Russell Jr. lost and Mark McSayo won, but in effect, it made Mark McSayo look bad to become a champion, and it actually made Gary Russell Jr. look good to win. Or, sorry, to lose. Sorry. So, anyways, let me let me restate that. Mark McSayo became the WBC featherweight world champion by beating Gary Russell Jr., but oddly enough, that fight made Gary Russell Jr. look good and made Mark McSayo look questionable, oddly enough. So Gary Russell Jr., for those of you that don't know, about third or fourth round, his tendon snapped or tore in his jab hand, his lead hand, his left hand. He essentially fought two-thirds of that fight with only one hand available to him, his, his left cross. And then Mark McSayo had both of his hands. He was healthy. He was, he was pumping on all motors. Now, Mark McSayo was doing very well in the very beginning of the fight. He was throwing punches in bunches, definitely getting a, lot, getting a lot of good body work in on Gary Russell Jr. And then Gary Russell Jr. got injured. So through the third or fourth round onward, Gary Russell Jr. was fighting with one hand, but he was so evasive and so slick, making it such a difficult and tricky fight for Mark McSayo. So... Essentially, Mark McSayo got the decision, and I don't believe the decision was a robbery or incorrect at all. There are certain entities online that are complaining that Gary Russell Jr. got robbed, and I didn't see that. I thought Mark McSayo won that fight fair and square. I also think Gary Russell Jr. could have possibly won that fight if Gary Russell Jr. was healthy. Personally, I'm a Gary Russell Jr. fan. But either way, the longer the short of it is, Gary Russell Jr. fought defensively sound and evasively and had Mark McSayo chasing him around the ring. But the big question is, how come Mark McSayo and Freddie Roach didn't make the adjustment to just end Gary Russell Jr.? You've got an injured man in the ring. Cut him off, throw some volume, and get the ref to call the fight. That didn't happen, but either way, Mark McSayo is now the champion. Hats off to that man. So, I just wanted to get out my thoughts on that. It was very unusual to see Gary Russell Jr. look so vulnerable considering he was the guy that was running circles around everyone for years. Gary Russell Jr., if you didn't know, was the longest reigning men's boxing champion in the game, or he was. He got his title back in 2015. It was like a six or seven year run, which is pretty astounding when you think about it. So, anyways, let's move on to the next topic I wanted to talk about. This very, very, very interesting fight card. Um... Edgar Berlanga, the monster, the Puerto Rican knockout artist, just announced that he's going to be having his fight and return to the ring. His opponent, Steve Rolls, it's going to be on March 19th at the Hulu Theater at Madison Square Garden. And I really like this fight card. How can you not want to see Edgar Berlanga, Keyshawn Davis, and Xander Zayas all at the same fight card at Madison Square Garden at the Hulu Center? I'm all for it. Let's make it happen. We're talking about the brand new wave, this new generation of young, up-and-coming, hot, prospect talent coming in. I don't know if you qualify Edgar Berlanga quite as a prospect. He's like 25 fights in. He's still undefeated. I look forward to seeing his fight, him and Steve Rolls. If you don't remember, Steve Rolls was the uh, the guy that fought Gennady Golovkin a few years back. He got knocked out. <clears throat> now, Berlanga in that last fight with Cosetis went the whole distance. He even got dropped one time. And it seemed like the general boxing consensus or general boxing fans wanted to throw Edgar Berlanga under the bus just because he got clipped and hit the ground. Look, just because Edgar Berlanga got clipped and hit the ground in that fight with Cosetas does not discount Edgar Berlanga's skill set. Cosetas is a top-level dog. He went the whole distance with Billy Joe Sanders and almost became a champion himself. You got to give Edgar Berlanga his credit for winning that fight. I'm not one to discount a fighter just because he gets knocked down once in a fight. This is... Pugilism. This is the sweet science. These things happen. Regardless of whether or not you like the quality of the win or not, the man won. Give Edgar Berlanga his flowers. I still think Edgar Berlanga, I still think Edgar Berlanga has a bright enough future, no doubt. I'm going to give that kid his credit. I'm not just going to discount Edgar Berlanga because he stopped knocking people out in the first round. 
Got to give it up to top rank. That marketing machine had the entire boxing world thinking that Edgar Berlanga was going to be the second coming of Felix Tito Trinidad. Hey, it's all good. In addition to Edgar Berlanga, we've got Xander Zayas. He fought six times last year. I think four out of those six fights that he had last year were knockouts. The kid is nice. Uh, what's his current record? Hold on. Let me, let me pull this up right now. Xander Zayas is sitting pretty, 12-0 with nine KOs. And every time we see Xander Zayas step into the ring, we see new wrinkles and new nuances to his skill set. He's throwing combinations more fluidly. His head movement is looking on point. I look forward to seeing that fight. It is, it is cool when you get to see these young up-and-coming talent as they develop because it looks like Xander Zayas has a phenomenally high ceiling. It might even be higher than Edgar Berlanga. Just my opinion, it, it could be Berlanga might be the star. Who knows? Right now, Puerto Rico is desperately clamoring to have its next great Puerto Rican star. Unfortunately, it wasn't Josue Vargas. Josue Vargas could have been that dude. And then he got slapped by Chon Cepeda. It is what it is. Just because Jose Vargas lost doesn't mean he's out of contention for possibly becoming a future champion. Don't discount fighters just because they lost once, y'all. And then we got... Oh, Xander Zayas' opponent, Quincy Levias. I'm not going to even pretend to, that I know who that is. But Xander Zayas will be fighting Quincy Levias on March 19th at the Hulu Center in Madison Square Garden. That's something to look forward to. Keyshawn Davis. Ooh. I don't care what anybody says. I think Keyshawn Davis is nice. Even though he's only 4-0. Four fights in his pro career. It doesn't take a genius to see that that kid has a high ceiling. That kid's got a high ceiling. You can think his amateur pedigree. We all saw him on that great run at the Olympics. He got the silver medal. Couldn't get past Andy Cruz. Uh, if you didn't know, Keyshawn Davis also lost to Mark Cra Castro in the amateurs. But very rarely does a person's amateur record reflect what happens in the pros. A lot of times, the whole rule set of the game changes when you hit pros. You're not throwing volume. You're not throwing just to collect a bunch of points. You're throwing with bad intent to put the fighter out of there. And I think Keyshawn Davis is a blue chip talent that we want to watch. I'm telling y'all, it's a great, great fight card. You got Edgar Berlanga, Xander Zayas, Keyshawn Davis all fighting March 19th at the Hulu Center at Madison Square Garden. The brand new young crop of hot up and coming prospects. It's definitely something you want to watch. Anyways, y'all, what do y'all think about that fight card coming up with Edgar Berlanga and Keyshawn Davis and Xander Zayas? How do you like Edgar Berlanga's chances against Steve Rolls? Is there a possibility Steve Rolls actually does damage to Edgar Berlanga? Can Steve Rolls beat Edgar Berlanga? Many, many questions, which I'm sure will soon be answered when that fight comes up. Anyways, y'all, hit follow if you haven't already done so. Press that like button. Leave a comment. Interact with your boy. Anyways, y'all know the deal. If you're not following me on TikTok or on Twitter, the handle is the same Hot Boxing Minute. You are watching the future of boxing analysis on YouTube. This is Hot Boxing Minute.